Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to Econ Movies. The holidays are coming, so it's time to analyze the economics in Home Alone. I made my family disappear. Yeah! But I'm also going to work in other Christmas classics, so let me know in the comments which one's your favorite, and if you leave a comment, like, subscribe, and share this video, I'm going to give you a million dollars. Really? No. Also, if you're a teacher, be sure to watch the video until the very end because I have a special gift for you. So here we go, let's jump into it. It's time for the economics of Home Alone. A common theme in a lot of Christmas movies is the idea that Christmas has become too commercialized, that it's all about shopping and presents, and in many ways, that's true. In the US, the holiday season brings in over a trillion dollars of spending, and for most companies, it's a peak in their revenue. But even though we're all buyers and consumers, most people don't understand the economics behind the scenes. For example, the law of demand states that as price goes up, people buy less of any good or service. When the price goes down, people buy more. And this creates a downward sloping demand curve. And most people understand that intuitively, but they don't realize that this curve can change depending on the good. And that determines which products go on sale at Christmas and which ones don't. For an example, let's look at the market for toothbrushes. I can't seem to find my toothbrush, so I'll pick one up when I go out today. Other than that, I'm in good shape. Toothbrushes have very few substitutes and they're a necessity. I mean, you need one if you want clean teeth and fresh breath. You stink. And the fact that they have very few substitutes and they're a necessity, and the price of a toothbrush is such a small fraction of your total income, the demand is inelastic. In other words, it's insensitive to a change in price. So when the price goes up for toothbrushes, the quantity that people buy will decrease but not very much. And it goes the other way as well. If the price falls, the quantity is gonna increase, but not very much. Is this toothbrush approved by the American Dental Association? On the other hand, a completely different product like pizza is sensitive to a change in price. So the demand is elastic. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Pizzas are amazing, but they're not a necessity, and there's plenty of substitutes. Meat pies, turkeys, suckling pig. This means that the demand curve for pizza is flat. So when the price goes up, the quantity people buy decreases a whole lot. And when the price goes down, people buy a whole lot more. And this explains why some things go on sale at Christmas and some things don't. If the demand is inelastic, there's no reason to have a sale because lowering the price doesn't lead to that many more customers and will probably decrease your total revenue. But if the demand is elastic, a sale would likely lead to more customers and more revenue. 9,972. Wait, if a company sells a product that has elastic demand, then why can't they just have a huge sale and get a bunch of customers? For the next five minutes only, 99% off. <laughs> There's three main problems of having a huge giant sale, and the first one has to do with your costs of production. It costs money to produce things, and if you lower the price too low, you might make a loss. Now, some companies actually do this. They lower the price of products below cost and actually make a loss on those products, but they get more people into the store and make more money on selling other products. The big box stores like Walmart and Target are known for doing this, but they don't lower the price of everything, just some few select items. The second problem of having a sale is not as obvious. When a business lowers its price, it loses potential revenue it could have earned from people that were willing to pay full price. In other words, having a huge sale would likely lead to new customers, but the customers that you would have already had are now paying 95% less. For the kids. And the third problem is that customers might turn around and resell the good. So if you have a product that you normally sell for $100 but sell it for $50, somebody might buy it for $50 and sell it to somebody else for $75 and pocket the difference. So having a huge sale doesn't make a lot of sense, so businesses do something else called price discrimination. That's the idea of selling the same good to different people for different prices. One of the best examples of this is the airline industry. But remember, we're talking about the same products. We're not talking about coach and first class. Those are two different prices because they're two completely different products. Don't you feel like a heel flying first class with all the kids back in coach? No, the kids are fine. Price discrimination is the idea that someone can be sitting in coach and somebody can be sitting right next to them also in coach and they both paid 
completely different prices. Now to pull this off, a company needs to be able to do a couple things. First, they gotta figure out which of their customers are willing to pay more and which ones are willing to pay less. In other words, which ones have inelastic demand, which ones have elastic demand. The airlines do this based on when you buy the ticket. People that need to be somewhere right now and have to fly short notice pay a higher price because they have more inelastic demand. Nothing available. May I help you get a hotel room in the city? Tomorrow afternoon, we can get you a flight to Chicago. I can't wait that long. And the second thing a business has to be able to do to pull this off is something I mentioned earlier. They have to prevent people from reselling the product. Oh, this gal has offered us two first-class tickets if we go Friday, plus a ring, a watch, a, a pocket translator, $500, and the earrings. You love the earrings. Airlines not only won't, but they can't let their customers resell their tickets. If they did, their entire pricing strategy wouldn't work. Some people might think that's unfair, but remember we're trying to allocate our scarce resources. If the price was the same for all airline tickets, some people would buy that maybe really don't want to go somewhere, but the low price, sure, I'll go. They don't really need to be anywhere, so maybe they get the tickets, maybe they don't. Raising the price of those tickets as you get closer to the flight date actually save those tickets for the people who want them the most, the people who need them the most. I am trying to get home to my eight-year-old son. And now that I'm this close, you're telling me it's hopeless. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no way. This is Christmas, the season of perpetual hope. Ma'am, if... And I don't care if I have to get out on your runway and hitchhike, if it costs me everything I own. So if airlines didn't price discriminate, there'd be more people using extreme measures to get somewhere during the holidays. <laughs> But remember, it's not just the airlines that price discriminate. In fact, every coupon is an example of price discrimination. Hold on, I got a coupon for that. It was in the paper this morning. Coupons are just a way to separate the market between people who don't mind paying full price and people who won't buy it unless it's on sale. So coupons and Black Friday sales, bulk discounts, kids discounts, those are all examples of price discrimination. So again, unlike most discrimination, Price discrimination is not evil. Think about it, a restaurant that offers a senior discount allows the elderly to go out to restaurants more often than they otherwise would if they had to pay full price. So price discrimination is just another example of businesses applying economics to get people what they want based on what they're willing to pay. Now I know I left out some of the best parts of this movie, so here's a montage of Marv and Harry getting injured. <laughs> Marv, what are you doing? Come on. I'll be sure to talk about the cost of healthcare in another video. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Wait, remember, teachers, I have a special gift for you. You ready for this? I made new worksheets for all of my Econ Movies videos, including this one, and worksheets for every single Crash Course Economics video. And the best part is you can get the first 10 episodes of Econ Movies worksheets for free. Just follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching my videos and supporting my channel. Until next time. Merry Christmas, Bob. And God blesses everyone.